Hi, Flick here from the Nerd Soapbox, and today we're at Son of Monster Palooza 2022 in Burbank, California, with a special guest. Our guest is a writer and director and former child actor, best known to the Nerd Soapbox gang, who are starring in Poltergeist, Poltergeist 2, and Airplane 2. Uh, well, I'm telling you, this house is clean. Just in time for our special guest, Oliver Robbins. Hey. Hi, Oliver. Pleasure to meet you. Oh, pleasure to meet you. So, how's your con so far? A con is doing great. It's even better since I've been interviewed by you. You're just, you know? just flattering me. You know, <laughs> you're, you're fantastic. You're my Thank first, you. uh, I guess, Muppet that's ever interviewed me before. Oh, or it's one of your cousins, I guess, right? Puppet. Puppet. Puppet, puppet. Yeah. Hey, guys, puppet. That's exactly yeah, what yeah. I meant. Puppet. <laughs> Uh, okay, so tell me, what was your fandom growing up? Is it, uh, were you into comic books, uh, sports, uh, cartoons? I was into all those things. You know what I really loved? I uh, loved Mad Magazine. That was uh, my, that, I grew up on that. Oh, yeah. I felt all my sensibilities, for better or worse, because <laughs> of Mad. And I loved the magazine so much that I actually got in it, and I was in, in it was Poltergeist was pictured in Mad Magazine. Oh, that's awesome. That's awesome. Okay, so uh, how old were you? Uh, when you were cast as uh, as Robbie in Poltergeist, and what was the audition process like for you? I, you know, it's funny you say that because it was like I didn't think I was going to get the part at all. It was an open call. There were hundreds of people waiting outside MGM Studios, which really? is not that far from here in Culver right. City. And my mom was like, "Do you want to go on the audition or not?" And I'm like, mm, "I don't know if I really want to wait." Lo and behold, I did, and I, I kind of won the child acting lottery. So they, you know. <laughs> And they asked me, when I, the movie was top secret, we didn't know what the story was at all. And they asked us, they said, um, Oliver, we just want to know about you. We want to right, know, because right. they're trying to find if I'm right for the character. They said, what are you scared of? And I said, well, the tree outside I'm scared of. <laughs> I'm afraid of this clown doll. I mentioned pretty much everything Robbie Freeling was afraid of. Oh, and wow. they're like, oh my God, you're the living carnation of the character we're looking for. <laughs> and and the thing is, um, they said, you're great. And yet we liked your audition, but I didn't know how to scream. I, I couldn't get a scream out. And the director, Toby Hooper, said to me, he said, um, Oliver, the secret to horror is screaming. So he said, right. so I went and I went and got a lesson. I'm not joking. There's people in Los Angeles here that will teach you how to scream. So I got a lesson <laughs> on how to scream. And I came back, I belted it out, and I got the part. Whoa, that's <laughs> fantastic. Hey, hey, did, you, did you say how old you were? I was 10 years old at that time, too, believe it or really? not. Really? Yeah. Okay, wow. At what point did, you, uh, did it hit you that the film was going to be a phenomenon? You know, I, I think when I first saw it, I said, oh my God, this movie is so scary. And I, you know, the, the real key was, I was in the movie and I was still scared by all the scenes, though, too. Oh, wow. So I was like, I knew, we had a feeling. I mean, you don't know if the film's really going to be a hit or not. But for me, it really connected and I was I was terrified about all like all the scares and, and all the scenes really just played for me as a kid. Okay, okay. What, what, what were your friends' and family's reactions to you appearing in that film? They were just very excited for me, too. It was funny, I was friends with a gentleman named Jeffrey Greenhut, and his father was a producer in all the Woody Allen movies. Oh. Um, like Annie Hall, those little films like that. Yeah, yeah. And I called him up and I said, Jeffrey, I got this big part of this movie. And everyone <laughs> was just really excited for me when I was a kid. Wow. One part in the movie that gave me the, the creeps is when that, cl when that clown <laughs> doll comes to life and uh, tries to strangle you in bed. Oh, jeez. There's, there's nothing worse than a doll or a toy that comes to life and starts talking or moving around. Yeah. Um, when especially, toys, especially when, when he tries to kill you. Yeah, when toys are possessed, that kind of is a downer. You know, I try to avoid that. <laughs> you're, you're an exception, though. I'll, I'll forgive you for coming yeah, alive. Oh. Oh. <laughs> as long as you don't try to strangle me, we're, we're gonna, we have a good working relationship. That, that scene was terrifying to watch. Was it as terrifying to film that scene as... Uh, or is there another one involving the tree, perhaps, that was no. more terrifying? Well, they actually, you know, not no scene was actually terrifying to shoot. All the effects were laid in afterwards, too. Oh, all, right. um, all the special effects. So, you know, basically the clown doll scene was I had to act backwards. They they reversed the image. We started at the pinnacle of fear. They pulled the arm away from me. Right. And then when the film was ro rolling forward, it looked like I was screaming and having the arm wrap around its neck. So everything on that set was oh. like its own unique kind of challenge when okay. I was shooting. They're like... And that, I loved it because it was like, I loved that as a kid, doing all these different <laughs> things like being attacked by a tree and, and being uh, strangled by a clown doll. What else do you get to do that in your childhood? <laughs> Every night in my dreams. <laughs> really? I'm, like, I'm glad I'm not in your dreams. <laughs> but uh, what was Toby Hooper like as a director? And what kind of guidance were you given 
to help you come up with your performances, Robbie? Well, they beat me every day. They put me in a little cage. That would help. with sticks. No, I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> That's a joke. <laughs> no, actually, they were just... He created this really calm, wonderful environment where I could just be a kid. He said, be a kid. Do what you would do in the scene. Like at the breakfast room, you know, Heather and I would make up lines and we pretended like we were just kids having breakfast together at the family di- you know, dining room table. That's fantastic. How, how well did you get to know Steven Spielberg while making a movie? I got to him pretty well. He was like a kid himself and he really related to me. And I told him, you know, on the set, I want to be a filmmaker. So he said, let me see your work. So I started shooting these little Super 8 movies. Whoa. And at the end of, end of the shoot, he brought this silver box in. I was like, what's that? And he opens it up and it's a Bolio 5008S mm. camera. And it's amazing, and it's like the super duper camera. And I started making uh, my first films with this camera Mr. Spielberg gave me. That's so neat. And then I even went to USC, and the camera was so advanced, I actually used it on my student films too. And I was able to do all these wow. fancy in, in camera kind of things, um, like you know, double exposures and all this kind of stuff too. That's fantastic. Did, did you attend the Poltergeist movie premiere? I did. There actually wasn't a premiere. There was just a showing of it, a screening of it. Right. And it was at MGM. And we just watched it, and then we all went to dinner afterwards, and that was it. There wasn't really too much fanfare, actually, for the for Poltergeist. Uh, okay, let's uh, switch gears. How old were you during the time you worked on Airplane 2, the sequel? And did you understand the film's humor at the time? I was 11 years old at the time. You know, I really <laughs> kind of got it, but I kind of didn't. You know, and I guess right. that's good because of all the... In Peter Graves, you know, he made one liner one after another. And I didn't really know. They said, just look in awe of what he's saying. Just be, put an innocent smile. Like, what is he saying? I don't understand. <laughs> and that's what they told me. That's what they told me how to react to every one of his lines. <laughs> what, what, uh, is there, what's your favorite uh, joke or gag? from uh, Airplane 2? For me, personally, I always wanted to get a pie in the face. And I, I did. And I actually got a pie in the face. So for me, that was my favorite gag when they did that. Whoa. How did you make the transition from child actor to writer and director as an adult? Well, I, you know, I always wanted to be a filmmaker. And I asked Mr. Spielberg, I said, you know, I want to do what you do. And he said, okay, well, I'd like you to go to film school. I think that's what I recommend because they teach all right. you all the rules of filmmaking. So I said, where should I go? And he said, go to USC. So I actually um, applied to USC and he gave me a letter of recommendation. And you would think, you get a letter of recommendation from Mr. Spielberg, they're going to let you in in two right, seconds. Right. They actually denied me acceptance. And USC said, <laughs> wow. USC, they said, we won't be told what to do. So, I know, I was joking. <laughs> wow. So it was crazy. So I said, I, I had a lot of chutzpah and I was like, you know what? I'm not going to take no for an answer. So I call up the film. Yeah, you have to. Especially, yeah. it was a, it's a metaphor for the film industry itself. So I call up the dean of the film school, and I'm like, who am I? I'm this, this kid calling me, 18-year-old <laughs> kid calling up. And I said, you made a mistake. You, you have to admit me. you got to let me in. And it's like, no, I didn't take no for an answer. So he said, okay. So I showed him my student film I made, and he was like, this is really good. So he overrode the admission committee. Whoa. And they, it was like Animal House. They had me on something called special status. And I, I didn't know what that was. <laughs> double all, secret it was, it was Double secret probation at USC <laughs> Cinema. <laughs> so then they said, you just have to maintain a 3.0 average, and otherwise you're out. So right. it was kind of... And I Whoa. did, and I and I made some great friends, and I loved all my professors there, and it was the it was the best you know experience of my life, and I had such a great time learning about cinema at USC. All right, what are you working on now? Now I'm just writing, and I'm coming up with new ideas, but I do have a movie that's right. out. If I can do my promotion, please, that's yes, called, yes, yes, that's called Celebrity Crush. And we really? made it at the, at the onset of COVID. And it was pretty bad because, right. as we know, everything got shut down. All the movie theaters, we couldn't have a movie release in theaters. Oh, yeah. There was no theatrical release. And so it went right to video. But so now it's out there, and it's called Celebrity Crush, and it's an Amazon Prime and Tubi. And the storyline is, it's about a kid in this movie called Chain Face Con. It's kind of an 80s iconic movie right. that came out. And this girl becomes obsessed with the lead actor from it, who's me. And uh, she traps me, she tries to seduce me, <laughs> and basically lives out her, her weird, crazy fantasies um, with me in her oh. in her dungeon style house. So it's kind wow. of a black comedy horror, and it, there's a lot of Easter eggs in it too. That if you know Poltergeist, you'll you'll really like the movie. <laughs> All right, and uh, tell us, are you on social media? I am. I'm on Instagram and Facebook, and I believe I'm on Twitter. I'm really bad with it, but I'm getting more. More fans all the time. Fantastic. Well, gee, uh, Dick, Oliver, thanks for talking with us. Okay. Thank you very much. It was very nice yeah. meeting you. All right. All right. Let's see who else we can find uh, to talk to at Monster Palooza 2022.
Okay, great. Did they, did That's they, great. Did that clown just move? I know. The, oh I'm my not, god. I'm not looking, they, but they're making friends. I'm they're not, making buddies. They're I'm like bonding. Uh oh. I'm not they're even like, gonna look. They're like working together. I can't. No, no, uh -oh. no. No, you guys. You guys. No. Is that clown? I'm out of here. Is that clown move. <laughs> okay. I think I'm gonna exit stage right now, guys. All right. Okay. All right. Thank you.